everybody. My name is Duchess and this is where we talk about true crime and missing cases. And tonight I want to talk to you guys about a case out of Hendersonville, Tennessee that is Sumner County and we have a missing 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers. And I spoke with his mom today on a telephone call, and I wanted to make sure that I gave you the latest update on what is happening in this missing case. Sebastian is 15 years old, and I want to get over here and share his missing flyer because here on Duchess, we share the accurate information, all facts. Uh, we don't want to mislead people. I want to make sure that we're sharing out all of the information. And I want to also give a big shout out to Smiley and Trev Time and all the creators that are covering Sebastian's case. It turns out that I have a friend of my sister's who reached out to me. Um, she sent me a text and said, hey, I just wanted to let you know that um, Sebastian's mother is my cousin. And I would really appreciate it if you could please talk about Sebastian's case and get his information out there. I appreciate all that you do. And she put me in touch with Sebastian's mom. And we did speak at length today. And um, I did record a few things that I think it's very important for you guys to know what's going on in this case. Um, his mother... His father and his stepfather are very, very worried about what is going on, what's happening. There has been a lot of search efforts. Um, so I want to bring you up to speed on what I know that's happening in this case. So I'm going to get down here. And <clears throat> if you hear the chewing sound, um, it's 
it's my pit bull and her dear antler, and I apologize in advance, but I have to keep her occupied. Um, here we have Sebastian's poster. I want to thank the Aware Foundation of Virginia. Thank you, Kenny Geralds, for making all of these wonderful missing flyers uh, for all of the missing people out here in the United States. This is for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Please share to locate Sebastian is age 15. He has actual light brown, sandy blonde hair. According to his mother, he has brown eyes. He is five feet, five inches tall and weighs 120 pounds. Sebastian is considered endangered missing. He is from Hendersonville, Tennessee, and he went missing on Sunday, February the 26th of 2024. Sebastian has been missing today for seven days. He was last seen near Beach High School on Stafford Court. He was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. Sebastian is autistic and he likes to hide under things. So TBI is asking residents who live near the search area around Beach High School along Long Hollow Pike to please check your outbuildings, your garages, your cars, and under your decks, anywhere where someone may hide and take shelter in case Sebastian used any of these as hiding places. And if you have seen or know about where Sebastian could be, please do not hesitate. Call the Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615 451 3838, or you can reach out to TBI, which is the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, at 1 800 TBI Find. If you see this poster or any of the beautiful missing flyers that are circulating around for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, please, please, please circulate that information around. You never know when somebody may see this young man out walking around. Um, this is the area. As you can see, Sumner County is in the upper right-hand corner. So the search efforts have been extended at this point out to Robertson County, Davidson County, which is where the capital Nashville, Tennessee is located, and also in Wilson County, Tennessee. Um, here is another picture up close. The mother did tell me that she took this picture on Saturday when they were at the Costco. He looks like a brilliant young man, uh, just full of life and energy. Um, he looks very intelligent. She tells me he is a high-functioning autistic. Um, and I did ask them several questions because I like to get out the factual information. And I really appreciate it when the family is very forthcoming uh, to give us all the information that we need to know. Apparently, the family has also let me know that there is a lot of misinformation that's going around, as well as the family is actually being attacked and harassed. So I have some clips that I do want to share with you guys because I feel like it is very critical for you to hear um, from the family about what has actually been going on. Now, the TBI is asking for people in this area around Beach High School to please search their property at a minimum of two times a day, according to the mother, in the morning and in the evenings, especially in case he has taken shelter somewhere and may be found sleeping. Uh, they're hoping that they're going to be able to find him somewhere. Um, this is getting more critical by the days, guy, because this, this is seven days, seven days that he has been missing. And of course, they have a command center that is set up here. Um, please, please, please share this information out. Such a sweet young man, and his parents are very, very worried, and they're likely listening to this live stream right now. I see Trev Times coming to chat. Thank you for being here, Trev. I think he did a live stream earlier today when I was actually speaking 
with Sebastian's mom on the phone and I missed your live stream trip and I'm so sorry, but I was going to send you a message to let you know that she said, if you would like to reach out to her, she would be more than happy to speak with you. I think they're going to be, they're working closely with the father, the stepfather and the mom. Um, so, you know, there's not like a situation where, you know, we have parents that are not speaking to each other. They're working very diligently and they are trying to find the best strategy about coming forward, um, whether it be to the news or if they make a written plea, you know, please, if you know anything, come forward and let us know if you have seen Sebastian. And I see Chris in the chat. Thank you so much for being here, Chris. Uh, if you see Chris Proudfoot in the chat, that is Sebastian's stepfather. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. And thank you for speaking with me today. We just want to get out the most accurate information about your son so that we can hopefully um, help anyone to know all of the information about Sebastian so that we can make sure that he is found safely and that he comes back home because I know that you and his mom, you know, miss him very much. Absolutely, Trev, I will put you in touch with him. I will message you after this live stream. And Trev, if you want to come up on panel and, and talk about this, I would uh, be happy to send you a link. I know that you went live earlier today, and I just wanted to give a shout out to all the creators who are covering this um, active case right now. The family really does appreciate everyone that is sharing Sebastian's information. Um, I really do want you to hear from the family. Um, when I when I talk with people on the phone, I I automatically just um, record conversations. Um, in case there's information that I miss. And I did ask permission from Sebastian's mother if I could play specific clips on information that they would like for the public to know because they did tell me that there is some misinformation that's going around and they wanted to clarify a few things. And there is some things that they can't speak on right now, but when they're ready to come forward, they will do so and they will let us know if there's any updates that's going to be happening. You know, Sebastian does need his medication. So this is a critical, critical situation. I've also made a phone call to my very good friend, Brad, with which everybody here that has been following my channel for um, any amount of time knows that I've co covered the Tyler Doyle case here in Little River, South Carolina. And I did reach out to Brad with Wings of Hope. He is currently still working on the Elijah Vu case out of Wisconsin, which was an Amber Alert. And right now he is attending a debriefing um, and he is going to get back with me and he is going to reach out and hopefully be able to arrange um, a search and rescue team that can go down there to assist in the search and rescue efforts to help find Sebastian. So um, we are keeping our fingers crossed that Brad is going to be able, if he's not able to do it, he is going to try to reach out to some other search and rescue teams that might be able to send in more manpower um, because we need all hands on deck. If you know any search and rescue teams, if you are in the state of Tennessee, um, don't hesitate to reach out. I do have uh, the information, uh, let me look that up real quick. I did screenshot that. Ken Widener is the director of Sumner County EMA um, in Gallatin, Tennessee, and I do have his email and work number. So if anyone does need that information, if you will just email me or if you can reach out to me on Facebook, I will also give that information to Trev. Um, you can reach out to Ken Widener um, to, to help coordinate those efforts. Harley, sit down. I know you want to be on this live stream and help, but sit down. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Yes, and I did ask Arctic Fox. Um, I didn't hear back from him, and he may be 
um, he may be busy, you know, with some personal things that he has going on with his family. But um, he probably did make a video originally about Sebastian. Um, so hopefully Arctic Fox will continue to share this out too. So I really do appreciate that. Trev says, I'm waiting to get the go ahead that way and I'll be joining the search as well. Trev, we really appreciate you. If you guys are local to this area and you can go out and volunteer your time to help this family um, in any search and or any type of efforts that they have going on, I, I know this family would be so grateful for any help that you could offer them. Um, I also did see a post today on WKRN News that stated anyone wishing to help the crews in the search for Sebastian Rogers can do so by donating goods at the command center at Shackle Island Volunteer Fire Department. And that was at this area where I showed you this picture earlier. And according to Sumner County Fire Buffs, Current needs are toilet paper, Clorox wipes, trash bags, and energy drinks. And you can actually find this post on Facebook. And that drop-off address is 3199 Long Hollow Pike. And that's in Hendersonville, Tennessee. So if you guys are local to that area and you can go by and bring the search and rescue teams um, extra things that they need to have on hand, I know people would be really, really appreciated it. Um, let me go over here. I see that I just got a text. Um, and Chris, you, are you down for a Q&A? You want to do that? I know that we we talked earlier and you were thinking about... Um, you know, you were going to let me know if if you want to come up and speak, um, I am more than happy to send you a link and you can come up on the live stream or you can call me on the phone and um, everyone can hear you via the telephone. So you just let me know in the chat and we can certainly do that. I think it really helps people to hear exactly what the family wants the public to know, what the needs are, what you guys are going through. It really helps us in the true crime community that's sharing out the information to know exactly what's going on because sometimes things on social media that get shared around are not always factual. Thank you, Doodlebug Fart. I really appreciate that. She says, I love that this channel is only facts driven. Much love. We try to stick to the facts. Now, if I do say that something is in my opinion, I will always state my thoughts about this are XXX. And I will always tell you that it's simply my opinion. So you won't go run to another place on social media and say, well, Duchess said this was the facts. But I promise that I will make sure that I share the facts with you always. So it looks like Trevor says that he's happy to join. So let me get that StreamYard link over to him real quick. If you guys will give me just a second. And Harley, everyone appreciates your assistance. <laughs> She's adamant to chew this deer antler right on top of this live stream, guys. And I appreciate you bearing with me because my new puppy just wants to help. I'm grabbing that StreamYard link right now. And Chris, I'm going to send you guys that StreamYard link on your Facebook Messenger. And if you decide that you want to come up and join Trev and I, I'd really like for you to meet Trev. He is a wonderful young man who covers lots of missing cases in the state of Tennessee. And I have a lot of respect for him. And I promise that he will do your case justice. And like I said, he is local to the area and he is willing to do whatever it takes to help these families. And that is why I love having Trev on my team. Um, sit down, baby. Okay, I'm going to send that over to you, Trev, right now to join the stream. And, and don't forget, guys, this is still an active Amber Alert as well. So please, please, if you see the Aware Foundation flyer um, and much thanks to all the creators who are out there making flyers and sharing this around, please share this on TikTok. I'm going to make a video and share this out on TikTok as soon as I get a chance. Um, please share this out on Twitter, Instagram, 
Facebook, wherever you can, I would really, really appreciate that. So I'm going to send you that that link to um, the mom's Facebook now, Chris, if you will look for that. If you click on that link, you don't have to sign up for anything. You can leave your camera off. You don't have to turn on your screen unless you want to. Jackie, you can hear this. The puppy is extremely happy. <laughs> hey, Jason, it's good to see you. Single mom, thank you for being here. Beagle mom, Beagle mom, thank you so much for becoming a member. We're so happy to have you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. I really appreciate you. I don't think I have my members video um, up right now. I've been cleaning up my stream yard and doing some reconstruction stuff over here while I've uh, been busy. So, um, but we really appreciate you joining the team, all of the members. I did speak to um, the parents also because I would like to maybe get some people together that might be interested um, in getting up a billboard for Sebastian in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Um, we've put up billboards for Summer Wells. We've put up billboards for Tyler Dole. Um, we've put up billboards for Jaden Carpenter. So um, I think anything at this point would possibly help to locate Sebastian and get his face out there. And the mom said that that would be wonderful, whatever it takes to bring her Bubba home. And that's what we want to do is we want to bring this child home safe. Okay, we have Trev here. Hey, Trev. Good evening, Duchess. Thanks for having me up. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm sorry that I missed your stream earlier, but I was actually talking to the family and I told them all about your channel and the wonderful work that you're doing for the missing and that I wanted to connect them to you because I felt like that you might be able to give them some local resources and help. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I'm in these, I mean, you, you know me well enough to know that in these kind of cases, whatever I can do, small, big, whatever it is, it's all about us all playing our part. And so I'm happy to help however Absolutely. I can, especially if it's here somewhere I can, you know, I can right. be within our driving distance ever get to. Right. For example, I'm the case is here with the, with the girls and then now this case in Middle Tennessee. Exactly. And see how I'm in here. I'm here in South Carolina, but, you know, I do have friends that live in Tennessee and, um, that's really important for me to just try to extend my reach. I know a lot of search and rescue people and I make missing flyers myself. And it's good to have connections because if I have a case, just like um, his mother's cousin reached out to me, she knows me personally. Um, and I was like, well, I know a bunch of people that I can call on that will be able to help get this case out. So it looks like that um, we have um, them coming up on panel. So if you guys will please welcome Sebastian's parents to the live stream. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you joining us. You're welcome. Um, we had a really good conversation today, and I appreciate you being willing to talk to me um, about Sebastian going missing. So I guess I will just kind of start out with, um, tell me what happened the day that Sebastian went missing. I know that his mom said that he was having a good day. He had had a great weekend. So do you want to walk us through what that looks like again for everybody? Um. He did have a really good weekend, actually. Um, when we come home from having supper that evening, um, he was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, when he went to bed, when I told him to go to bed, um, he had even, he said, I love you, mama. And he said, I love you, puppies. Um, a little later in the evening, I myself went to bed and uh, when I went to wake him up for school, he wasn't here. And you did tell me that Sebastian is not a runner. He's not. It's okay. Take your time. Sebastian does not have a history of running he, he i mean the young man doesn't go outside 
very much. I mean, everybody in the neighborhood knows him. Um, he is very um, to himself, so to speak. Okay. Um, between the hours of, you know, 12 and 6, he he has basically vanished. Walked out of the house, the door was locked, and gone. He didn't take a phone. None of his shoes are missing. Now, you told me that night that, now, Chris, you were at work. You were out of town at work, yes, so you were not even home. Correct, ma'am. And, Mom, you uh, fell asleep on the couch about oh. 10 o'clock, but you said that Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m., and then you got up off the couch, and you went to bed, and you said that was around midnight. Midnight. And and nothing was unusual at that point. Everything so, seemed okay. There's actually a piece of, so to make something very crystal clear, so that okay. way there's transparency across the board. Me and the mom were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police departments, TBI included. Uh, we stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mom did slightly start falling asleep while she was on the couch. Um, I had said, hey, you need to wake up, put the dogs up, go to bed. Uh, now, mind you, that was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. Mm -hmm. So then mom does go to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake her son up, get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mom who can't find her son in the house. Um, mom made an effort to look and search several times. Um, mom has called me at the time and asked me, she was like, I can't find him. I was like, do what? And she goes, yeah, I cannot find him. I said, well, hang on. I made the phone call and reported it to the sheriff's department because... That's what we're supposed to do. And within 10 minutes, the sheriffs were dispatched to the location. And you had told me that there hadn't been any particular situation that had occurred where you felt like there would have been something that happened. And I also had asked you if there were any friends that Sebastian might have possibly left the house with, or if he had any contact with anyone on social media. Do you want to comment about that again? He doesn't have a social media. Um, okay. And the only friends that he had were a couple of kids in school. Okay. Um, all the kids that have had any interaction with him have been interviewed and asked. Okay. We, we as parents... Um, know how social media can be right. and seeing how kids can be easily manipulated. Um, he's very young in mind. Yes, he may be. Right. He's about 15 and he's 15 in age in his body, but his mind is not caught up to his body. Um, but that is something that goes through with autistic children, as everybody would know. Right. Um, but for the record, we I am a very strict parent. I do he does not have social media, not in our household. He doesn't uh, online game. He I mean, I am I'm pretty strict when it comes to that kind of situation. Well, that's good. That's good, Chris, that that you have control of that because social media can be very dangerous for young kids um, because they don't realize who they may be talking to on social media. So it's always good to have that awareness and to make sure you're monitoring, you know, what your kids are doing. So I had asked you both, you know, did you have any idea what would make Sebastian want to suddenly leave the house? And you told me, well, that's the million dollar question that everybody wants to know. All the detectives, they've all asked that same question. What is it that happened that caused him to leave the house? Um, and I know you must be so worried and so concerned. 
Is there anything, if, if Sebastian were listening to this live stream right now, if you knew that he was out there, what would you want to tell him? That we love you and to come home. I mean, it's pretty simple. This boy has a very large family that everybody is asking the question, where are you? We love you and please come home. Yes. We definitely need to find him as soon as possible. If you live in this area, please search your property every day. He could be on the move. Just because you've already searched your property one time doesn't mean that you don't need to continue to search your property on a daily basis just to be sure. If you have a lot of land, it needs to be searched, you know, just to be sure because he may be lost. He may be somewhere and he doesn't, he can't find his way back. So that's why it's very critical. Can you talk to me about the search and rescue efforts? Are they searching on land, air? They also have dive teams there. What can you tell us about that? So currently, um, they, as of today, the National Guard was also brought in to help with the search. But they have had fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, um, horseback ATV side by side, um, door to door scouring every neighborhood possible. Um, I mean, the outreach from the community and various counties has been extremely welcoming, loved. I mean, it, it, it's. We've been told this is probably one of the largest searches that they've conducted with so much input that it, it's it's a case to be studied for sure. You have a lot of people that are praying and supporting you right now. Was his ask, would he be able to ride a city bus? Um, nothing is off the table as far as abilities. Could the young man get on a bus? I'm sure he could. We've never done it before. We've never rode a city bus, so I don't think he understands the process. Um, he doesn't have any uh, sense of money. He may have, like, let's say a $20 bill in his hand, but he doesn't truly understand what $20 would get him. He's good right. at money, but he doesn't I understand. understand um, and money. And single mom says, does he want his real father? Maybe I'm just asking. Well, it turns out, single mom, that, you know, he sees his real father every other weekend. And uh, the real father, uh, he is heavily involved in this situation and is aware. And he doesn't know where Sebastian is either. Correct? Correct. I mean, I can tell you this. His father's very much involved in his life. Yes, very much involved in his life. The relationship between all three of us as parents is not your common one. I mean, me and the father talk on a regular basis. We call each other. We talk, Hey, if we heard anything, how's he doing? Is he acting up? Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not, there's no really animosity in between the parents. That's good. That's good. Discovering the truth. Thank you for being here. They say, did he have any special interest like trains, parks, friends, maybe a school bus route that he loved? My son elopes and loves trains, so he heads to the tracks. He um, loves playgrounds. Yeah, he loves playgrounds. I mean, he he loves to play. I'll give him that. Um, Friends-wise. He wants friends. Sebastian, sure. his idea of his friend is right now is what he has two kids that he talks to at school. But he is extremely socially awkward, and so it's very difficult for him to make friends, uh, which has been this boy's only lifelong dream. If I mean, he, he Christmas, what do you want for Christmas? I want friends. Birthday, I want friends. Anything that he could do to get a friend, he would love to do it, which is potentially dangerous because that could open up doors if for somebody to say, hey, I'll be your friend and potentially cause harm. 
Kim Holmes asked if there's any cameras in the area. And I did see, Kim, that they were asking for people that had any ring doorbell footage or any businesses that had camera footage. Talk to us about that, Chris. We did speak about that briefly earlier about the people getting all the footage, but they haven't found anything. Um, our entire neighborhood and surrounding neighborhoods have voluntarily and with generosity given up any video footage that they have they've they've got and, i mean they have let the, the the departments come in and view and monitor um so as far as cameras everybody has turned over everything there's thousands of hours of stuff that they are combing through to right. try to find an answer it looks like Tish is local to the area. She said, I go to the grocery store or anywhere and our eyes are peeled looking for him. I work at a local restaurant and I'm checking cars as they come through the drive through every day. Bless you, Tish. I know this family is very grateful. Um, Discovering the Truth says, so he probably knows the route to his father's house. So maybe he was in the process of heading in that direction. Is that, that has, a yeah, that has not been ruled out. Um, I mean, like I said, the search that they are conducting is extremely widespread and thorough. Mm -hmm. Um, so nobody is ruling that out as a possibility. But normally when he wants to go to his dad's, he just says so. And we just call his dad. Yeah. I mean, it's dad will come down here. We meet him halfway. I mean, there's this, he's never wanted to go to his dad's and not been able to go. Let's put it that way. Right. Barkey, thank you for being a member for six months. Um, the, all of this is very, very helpful to help us, you know, better understand the situation that we're dealing with. Um, and I did see a post on Facebook that it looked like everybody was asked to wear green on Friday because green is Sebastian's favorite color. Um, what else can you tell us about Sebastian? Um, this, he is an avid Minecraft fan. Um, loves the color green. Um, it's got the goof, the goofiest and quirky smile in the world. I, I don't think, I don't think anybody could, could, um, mimic it to be honest with you. Um, he looks like he's such a sweet young man. He, um, loves to dance. That boy can, he'll dance his tail off. That's hey, sure. that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Dancing is good for you. It's good exercise too. Um, I just really hope they can find some answers. Now, I did ask you guys because, um, you know, I know that sometimes when we're looking for autistic children that go missing, a lot of times people are concerned that they may be attracted to go towards the water. So talk to us about that. Is he is he a good swimmer? Does he like to get in the water? I think you did mention some things about that to me earlier. Um so he he's a fish in the water i'm gonna tell you right now that he, if there's if but here's the distinction he is not a child that likes to get dirty he can't stand his hands dirty he can't stand bugs he is fearful of flies and things so if he swims he is a pool pool kid he's not a i'm a river and a stream kind of kid he is swimming pool bound Discovering the truth, I'm sure that they are probably looking into that. Now, I know that you said there was some misinformation that was going around <clears throat> and you wanted to make a clarification. You did tell me that TBI, uh, you know, was assisting, but that there was some confusion. People thought that FBI was actually assisting in this case. Talk to me about um what you spoke about earlier to me on our phone call about how FBI is uh, that they were consulted um, and the card team, um, you know, was they were, I guess there is a discussion going on as to whether he qualifies um, as, you know, for the child abduction response yeah. team. So he, the FBI is not physically on the ground. Uh, somewhere in, in one of the news clips, I think it was reported that the FBI had made it on the ground. They're not. Um, TBI, Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, has reached out to the behavioral analysis team or their CART team. 
and they are trying to work with them from a distance, not they're not physically present, uh, to help in, in any way, form, shape that they can render their assistance. Okay. Um, light and sound, thank you for being here. Have burner phones been looked into? I know some teens sneak phones from their parents or maybe his computer use at school to we see if he has been checked. Evidence of a secret phone. Okay, good, good. Because digital evidence is really important. They want to make sure that he's not speaking to anybody. This is such an unusual case. Um, this case is very extremely uh, unusual. Um, like I said before, we are pretty strict when it comes to certain things. Um, as far as comms, communication, electronic devices, mm -hmm. there was only one phone that he had. It was extremely locked down. He had access to his phone, his text message to only his contacts list, uh, a camera, and a calculator. And that is it. He's a pretty happy kid, usually. He seems like it. And I know that you love him very much. I know that you, I can remember earlier in our conversation, you, you were referring to him as Bubba. And I that's think that's what I, sweet. What I, I call my son Bubba also. So that really tore at my heartstrings because my son, he's 30, but he's still Bubba to me. So um, it just, that name is going to stick forever. It's just how it is. Cindy Caton, thank you for being here. She says, are there any old wheels that maybe he accidentally fell in or any areas or mines that he, he might be at risk of coming in contact with? I know sometimes those things occur out in Tennessee. Um, the divers, have they... Had they found any possible leads? Um, I know that I heard that there was a possible pond that they were draining. You did tell me they were searching all of the pipes. Yes. So when it comes to uh, to, to address her, her question as far as wells and things, I'm sure there's plenty of those around here. Um, They're searching them. They actually pulled data for all the caves, uh, underground voids, all of that stuff that could be accessible. They brought in teams from all over the state that specialize in either cave explorations, um, water recovery rescues. Uh, we don't know that they have drained a pond. I can say that much, but they okay. have searched, dived them. Dived, they've dived them all for sure. They've okay. walked, I couldn't tell you how many miles of creeks and waterways, and they've used cameras. They, you know, the sewers, it, it's not really the sewers they're looking in. It was, the drainage it's the drainage pipes. Nobody, so that, that that's for clarification, Dr sewer pipes. We're not going to find a child in those right. are enclosed and secured, but the runoff uh, water runoffs were all searched by a dive team. Okay. And I know Ginger Snap said his law enforcement looking into the possibility that he met a friend through Minecraft. I hope that they would just go ahead and vet all of that just to make sure um, because you never know. I'm not really sure how all that works because I'm not a gamer, but I know that there are ways that you can communicate like via Xbox because my son is a gamer. So, um, and Gabrielle, I believe that they, you guys were at the Costco on Saturday. That's when you took the picture of him, correct? Yes. My okay. wife was at Costco on Saturday. Yeah. Not the shirt Sunday. that's in the flyer where it says optimism was on a Saturday. They okay. were at Good. BJ's on sunday um okay and, what and when is it that? comes to a restaurant or no they are all wholesale uh like a commissary style stores where they sell in bulk oh okay okay um so Costco so, saturday bj's on sunday yes he loves to eat all the samples and bj's is new so i took him you're a good mom and when it comes to like the one mentioned about minecraft uh, like i stated before he does not have any way to come with anybody on, on any form of online gaming. That is re extremely restrictive. We don't allow that because of what can come of it. They combed all of the electronics. Um, I can tell you this without with, with no hesitation. Anything and everything 
we have given to the police and any other law enforcement to have them completely scan, uh, validate everything, and they are they are currently. I mean, everything is empty. I mean, they they were like, "You guys are pretty good." I said, "Yes, sir." We don't believe in allowing the kids to communicate uh, through social media or through any type of gaming. Uh, looks like Missing in USA says, why are they wanting camera footage from Sunday afternoon? Because that we can, that we cannot release right now. Okay, that is not something that has been authorized us to uh, right. put out to the public. And we respect that 100%. Ginger Snap says, I was reading that his favorite song is Eye of the Tiger. That's a great song. <laughs> he, he's got an eclectic taste of music. He is a, he's a fan of Eddie Vedder. He oh, likes well, Survivor. Great. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's young man has a very eclectic taste in music. Like and you told me that Taylor he Swift, loves to uh, play chess. Carrie Underwood. And he loves to play chess, he right? He has a crush on Taylor Swift. Ooh, he has a oh well, um his boy her boyfriend better watch out then. Um was 911 allowed to be called Rhonda asks. Uh on the cell phone is that what she's referring to? Yes, I believe so. Is that what you're asking Rhonda? All device. <clears throat> All devices that have communications um have the ability to call 911. Believe it or not, most cell phones that are not even connected to service have an ability to actually call 911. Yeah, you can pick one up off the shelf at a store and most will call. Yeah. That it, that's become a federal thing. That's not a, a a service provided. That is like a federal thing. Right. Well, we restrict safety features even if we could. Yeah. Safety safety is not restricted in this house. Okay, I do have one other question before I before I read what was his is saying. Um, there was something I was going to ask you. Um, let's go ahead and do was his question right now. Um, Shackle Island Road and New Shackle Island Road, are they in the same area? New Shackle Island Road um, runs, par runs parallel to Long Island. Old Shackle Island Road um, is actually farther directionally. It would actually be south in front of the hospital, the Hendersonville Hospital. That is roughly, I think, four or five miles from our house. Okay. Okay. That single mom, that's your favorite song, too. Now, Something I do want to ask you is because I've been I've been watching social media because that's what I do. I share missing cases on lots of different social media platforms. And I was very disappointed when you told me that people were harassing you and attacking you. Um, is there anything that you want to put to rest while you're here tonight or make clear to the public about this situation? I know you told me there was a statement that you wanted me to make. Um, about you and the mom and the dad. So if you want to make any clarification about that, you have free reign to do so. We will not allow you to be disrespected here on this platform. Um, it, I, I, I have no malice or ill intent toward anybody. Everybody has an opinion. Of course. Um, but what is factual is that the father, the mother, and myself have been in extremely cooperative we have been vetted we have been checked out we have been questioned and everything of that nature and literally have been cleared there is no wrongdoing there is no negative input from the parents or any of the family you know um and i it's hard for a lot of folks i mean there's i i will be honest and say this out loud i have a custody case that is currently going on in another state which has been brought to public light because people feel that they want to judge and think that they understand what's currently going on and they don't because of that i am being looked at in a very foul foul way um i 
Mm-hmm. I don't need to repeat anything that's being said, but right, you know, but and people it's that are, okay. there's people that's probably seen it on social media. And I want you to be able to have the opportunity to defend yourself. We have 248 people watching right now. And I'm sure that anyone that's watching this on the live stream, um, please respect this family. I mean, you can't have an idea of possibly what they are going through. And it's really not any of your business what is going on. And I understand that you do see your other child, which, you know, and that doesn't have anything to do with Sebastian. And you guys are on good terms with his father. There's not like there's any uh, custody battle between the mother and Sebastian's father. I mean, obviously, if he wants to see his father, you guys told me that, you know, you, you just plan to meet up and it's, you know, it's no big deal. So, um, I've read a couple of heinous things that people are saying, and it just really upsets me to know that people are just going to that without having all of the information and knowing that law enforcement has interviewed, interrogated everyone in your family. They have looked into you. They have all of your devices and that they basically cleared you guys of any involvement in Sebastian's disappearance. And I just wanted the public to be able to hear you say that because you do have the right to defend yourself because it's not a, like you said earlier, it's not about you. It's about finding Sebastian. Correct. Yes. Um, And I just don't want to have people to be dragging you around on social media. Isn't it already difficult enough that your child is missing? Uh, That's, I mean, that's beyond words. This is a feeling that, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't I care. Wish this Nobody should ever have to endure. It is not something that should ever be wished upon for anyone. Now, I do see Miranda. Um, Miranda has a child uh, that has is special needs as well. And we've covered a case on my channel involving her child in the school system here on my platform. Um, so Miranda is a very strong advocate for kids that have special needs and them getting fair and equal treatment. And she says, how is his skills on walking around on heels or without a trail? Because my son would stumble if he had to step over a one inch rock or any form of incline. So, I mean, does he, is he able to walk good? Does, I mean, how is he able to navigate on his own? I mean, does he, Can you hear me? Did I lose you guys? Can you hear me? Chris, are you there? Can you hear me? Trev, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can can hear you. Okay, maybe Chris lost signal. We'll give him a few minutes to come back. They may have had to to mute out. Thank you, FarQ. I appreciate it. Um, Chris, we're not able to hear you. They may have... um, been they may have cut gotten cut out with their Wi-Fi service. So if you need to come back, please let us know. I'm gonna go over here to the chat while we wait for Chris. They may have had a phone call or something to come in. So we'll give them a few minutes. No rush. Um discovering the truth said when my son was nonverbal, he had a speech device that was supposedly blocked from the company so he couldn't go to any websites and somehow he bypassed it. They're smarter than you think. Wow, discovering the truth. That is incredible. And he is a high-functioning autistic young man. So um, they have the, and look, Chris dropped. He must have lost his signal, guys, but he'll probably come back. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Chris, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Okay. That's like a Verizon commercial. (laughs) Can you hear me now? (laughs) I figured you might have lost signal. Yeah, it's okay. We're, uh, it's. 
We'll we'll figure it out. We get it back every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I understand. He's um, he's he's high functioning. I mean, he's he's fully able to hold a conversation, and he walks, and he loves to run. Okay, well that's good. And Rhonda wants to know if he has a special button on his phone. Uh, no. On his phone? I don't. Mm -mm. Okay. But he doesn't have his phone. Yeah, and he left his phone at home, so he doesn't have it. Was his says, I'm local and I'm trying to get a direction. Thank you. And says something about exit five. Are you guys close to exit five? <laughs> no. Well, that depends. You can access off of what they call uh, New Shackle Island Road, which I believe is exit six. Mm, yes, I um, see. Thank you, Mrs. Clem. Yeah, I believe it's exit six and exit seven will be in Indian Lake. But uh, as far as the special button on his phone, um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. <laughs> yeah, me either. And I know Discovering the Truth said that, you know, her child was able to get around the the security system that they had kind of set up on the phone so they couldn't access the websites uh, to that it was locked. And apparently he got around it and okay. was able to access it. And I guess that's kind of what they were talking about, um, you know, in a couple of the text in the chat. So that's what I was trying to address because a lot of the people that come to my streams, they have children that are also autistic. So they deal with a lot of situations and they may can understand some of the things that you may be, have, you know, be dealing with at this moment. I can only imagine what you're going through, not knowing where he is. Um, um, we, without publicizing our address, best I can tell you is we are off, uh, by the beach area and that kind of area is where mm -hmm. they predominantly been focusing their searches. Right. Um, when it comes to the special button, no, um, just so some parents are aware, even if you lock down your child's phone, some children can actually turn their phone into safe mode, which would bypass the parental locks and then allow a child to go on the internet. There is a way to block that. Um, you would have to look that up. That's too much in deep and depth to go into, but no, I mean, when I say we, we're strict, we lock it down, we lock it down. Okay, well, that's good to know. David Bryant, thank you so much for being here. David says, hey, one question. Do you think he would have stuck to roads or do you think he could have went off into the wooded areas? That is, that's hard to say. We don't really have an answer, but all I can say is uh, every avenue is being searched regardless of woods, roads, anything. Everything that can be searched is currently being searched. Reckless Ellis, thank you for being here. Reckless Ellis says, I'm not saying he did this whatsoever, but I did see a screenshot from Facebook where he yelled at the news and told them to get off his property. Is there any truth to that? Well, Reckless, I'll let them speak for themselves, but if the news was on my property, I might yell at them to get off my property too. <laughs> so I have not... I have not spoke to any news crew that have been physically on my property. I have spoken to a news crew that was down the street and just asked them politely, do not film my house. They mm -hmm. were filming the police doing something and that was perfectly okay. They gave me the words. We shook hands and politely moved on. So, no, well, I mean, as far as yelling you. at the news, no. Okay. Well, thank you for clarifying that. I hope that helps Reckless Ellis and thank you so much for being here. Um, let's see. Um that's right, leave it to Bieber. These are real people. Focus on the missing baby. Exactly. Thank you for being here, Miss Chewy. It's so good to see you. Um, that's right. We all know that the child is in danger and needs to be home where he's safe. And that's all we need to know. I just want to make sure that people understand, like, this family is really going through it. And the focus needs to be on the child. So, um, and we just appreciate anyone that's able to to get out there. Now, do they also have search dogs that have been out uh, helping assist in the search? Yes, ma'am. They have brought in dogs from various locations, from uh, I believe from even other states as well as other areas within the state. So it is 
deeply, deeply being checked. Okay, I'm going back over here. I see David Bryant's left another comment in chat. Okay, gotcha. We'll keep searching, praying for your families. I just posted multiple pictures from what my dog has found searching, and you can feel free to reach out if you would like me to search anywhere. So it sounds like David may have um, some search dogs himself. David, if you want to send me an email um, or reach out to me with Facebook Messenger, if you have any information that you would like for me to pass on to the family, I'll be more than happy to do that, and we appreciate that so very much. Um, Jennifer Jennings, thank you for being here. Jennifer says, how long has he been married to the mom? Isn't he Seth's son? Who is searching for this boy, mom, dad, or who? Well, it sounds like there's a lot of people involved, including the mother, the father, the stepfather, um, and law enforcement. Um, when you say, how long has he been married to the mom? Are you referring to Chris on panel? Julio, thank you so much for being here. Chris always treated my girls and son with nothing but kindness when we worked together. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Julio. I know that probably means a lot to him. That's right, Jennifer. I think everybody is searching. It doesn't sound like there's any animosity um, with anybody that's going on here. So, um, and please be respectful in the chat. Um, if you want to come in here and attack the family, uh, the moderators can show you to the door. There's no need to announce your departure. Light and Sound says, I pray he wasn't being bullied at school. I imagine classmates who knew him have been interviewed. And yes, I do believe Chris said that earlier. And did he typically take his phone places with him, guys, or did he normally leave it at home? Believe it or not, it was actually a struggle to get him to carry his phone. Um He's not like your typical teenager. He he's not these kids that, you know, got to stick their head in the phone. He's not. He's not glued to it. He's not. He know because of his restrictions. You know, he knows that what it's for. It's a tool. It's not an entertainment device. Um, I mean, it, he had his struggles with doing basic, simple things, and I mean, it was a constant reminder, a constant this, it, and all three parents have been extremely positive and, and constantly trying to get him like, hey, we gotta do this, bud, we gotta do that. Take your phone. Take your to phone. Teach him to 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 be responsible and to think about it. Yeah, and then um Julio, I can contest I mean we work together out in San Diego, so he's amazing. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. Um let me just take care of something here and chat real quick. Um, Jennifer, I appreciate you being here. We welcome all opinions, but we're just it. How long he's been married to the mother is irrelevant with Sebastian being missing. So I hope that you have a wonderful night. But respectfully, I'm going to have to remove you from chat because it's a distraction. And we are focused on talking about Sebastian and about his case. And I hope you have a wonderful night and please come back again. Okay, let's get back over here to the chat. I try to, to not get distracted <laughs> when we have these situations, but we just don't have time for that. Um, I'm not going to allow disrespect and uh, my moderators know that. So um, I appreciate my mods in here. Uh, Y'all get put some hearts and hands up for the moderators in here. They're doing a fantastic job. We have 363 people in here watching right now. If you haven't already hit the like button, please do that and share this out because it helps to get Sebastian Rogers information circulating on social media. People are going to want to know what the parents have to say. I think it's very important that people hear the facts straight from Sebastian's family. AD says, I'm autistic myself, but as a kid, I used to have restricted internet access and I've managed to bypass it before. That doesn't shock me because I have a cousin that has the same thing has happened. I think it's it's different for every kid because there's such a spectrum. 
there's such a spectrum. So that's why we have to be on high alert. This is a vigilant, important situation because we really don't know the circumstances of what has actually transpired with Sebastian. And he could be in danger. And I see Burton Staggs here. Burton, thank you so much for coming over. He says there's two similar cases. A Mississippi autistic teen was missing and found nine days later in Tennessee. He walked. In Arizona, autistic teen walked approximately 200 miles and was found safe. Incredible. Does he have a lot of energy? Does he like to go on long walks and things like that? Especially off his medicine. Mm. I really would like to get a billboard up for Sebastian. And I think I had mentioned that to you earlier. Do you think that this might be something that would benefit Sebastian to get his face out there if we could get a couple of billboards? Um, guys, give me some feedback in the chat and let me know what you think. I might could, you know, crowdfund. You know, that's what membership is for. When you guys are members of this channel, that's that's actually where your money goes is to these little crowdsourcing things that I do. So um, I have some money already put back that I can put forward to it, but I probably wouldn't be able to keep it up for more than just a few days because it can get expensive. But um, what do you guys think about that? Do you think, Trev, what are your thoughts about that? Do you think that having a billboard up for Sebastian might be beneficial? I think so. I mean, it's, you know, we've looked at that in, in plenty of cases and you and I have spoken about that, spoken about that before, talked with, you know, different families. It's at the very least, it's keeping that face and that story in, in the public eye. It's keeping people reminded of, of what's going on in their community, what's going on locally, what's going on the next county over, whether they work there, live there, travel through there, they're seeing it. Well, I can certainly design a billboard. We can work together behind the scenes. You can send me a picture and let me know exactly what you would like it to say. And we can get uh, we can get something started on a blip as early as tomorrow. <laughs> if you know if you think that that's going to be something, I will look at the locations and I can let you know where they're at. And we can try to get something going. Cold Case Crystal, thank you so much for being here. That's another person that's on my team that covers cases. And she's in Kentucky. And uh, Crystal, did you just send me a cash app? <laughs> Cold Case Crystal, thank you so much for sending me that. And I will definitely put it for the billboard. We're still going to put up some billboards for Jaden Carpenter. So you and I need to get together in the next couple of days so we can get these uh we can get these billboards up as soon as possible because uh, we need to help find Sebastian. Is there anything else that you guys want to share with us that you think that we need to know about the circumstances involving Sebastian going missing? Is there anything that you want to share with us that we have not talked about? I'm going to put the flyer again here. Uh, so you guys can take another look at that. Um, I mean, every everything that we've covered so far, I mean, is exactly everything that we've covered. You know, we just met, we miss them and we want them home. Just exactly. Let them be home. Mods, thank you for checking. Um, the chat. Alan, we're definitely not going to tolerate that. So, um, if you have a Alan's gone. I, I got rid of Alan. He's gone. Thank you. I appreciate that trip. And Duchess, if I may, well, we still have the family up. Um, yes. People in cases like this guys, and this is for anybody listening now, watching later. However, everybody in their mind has an idea of how a family or how, um, those who knew, know a missing person should react. You know, should they go and talk to these people this day and say these things this day or what they don't. The thing is here is um, law enforcement goes and talks to these people, guys. 
I've known plenty of families in these situations, unfortunately. But law enforcement goes and talks to these people. They don't owe us answers no matter how curious we get. There's no timetable of when they should stand in front of a camera, when you should put a microphone in front of them, when they should join this, that, and the other. Absolutely. Now, if they, if they bring that to us, then we should sit back and listen and, and let them tell their story. But what matters is answering who they need to answer to. And that's not us. That's not me. That's not Duchess. That's not you guys. Chief, The chief deputy, I believe Chief Deputy Craddock is his name, has been very clear in his press conferences that the family is fully cooperative and there have been zero signs of foul play. Now, if the TBI and the local authorities are saying that there is no sign of foul play, then it is completely irresponsible to make things up on the contrary. There are cases where you have to look at the home and you look at the family. This is not one of them. You can, you know, it's, we have to look at what's true. And what's true is this 15 year old boy is missing from his home. He has been missing and he is still missing. And what matters is bringing him home safe to his family, who was kind enough to join us tonight and answer your questions. So while nobody has to believe any certain thing, we need to respect what we're told by those who are in charge. And so just remember that as we as we go through this case and in any case you listen to. And I support this message. Thank you, Trev. That was very well said, and I appreciate you saying that. Um, we just need to be respectful. There's things that the family want to share, and there's things that they are they're not obligated to share any information, but they desperately want to find their child. And I want to give them a safe place to be able to come here and share the information that they want us to know so that we can get it out there on social media, that we know what the facts are, that we've heard it directly from the family. So we know what the misinformation is. Like they told us earlier, the FBI is not on the ground searching for Sebastian. Yes, the card team was contacted and they were, um, you know, they were spoken to but they're not active and there's people putting that on social media. You know, the facts matter. We're not going to solve the case. It's for law enforcement. We have to let them do their job. So there's no need to come into this live stream and throw accusations around and disrespect this family, period. If you have it a just, problem. It doesn't with help. It, it doesn't. He, Sebastian's still missing and he is without his medication. He is. He is not where he's not in his home. He is missing. He is likely very scared and unsure of his circumstances, and he is endangered at this moment. So I think 100 percent of the efforts and emotions should be put towards finding him. He deserves to be home. And if you in taking the time to, to just mislead and say false things and wherever you may go, leave your opinions at the door because it's about bringing this child home. Thank you, Stacy. We appreciate your prayers. Yes, Mary, that is true. There is an anonymous group of Nashville business owners that have started a reward fund for Sebastian, and that is $3,000. So we want to thank those anonymous business owners for doing that. Um, that's an amazing thing to do. I did ask the family if there was any other reward funds that were going to be activated at this time, and there are not. And that's all they're going to say on that. And the families are entitled to privacy, uh, Ginger Snaps, absolutely. And they are entitled to respect and they will get it in this house. Now, Janeth, I appreciate you being here. How did they know he took a flashlight? Well, I asked that very same question today, and I was so glad that Sebastian's mother explained it to me because when I read that news article, I was like, well, how did they know he had a flashlight? Do you want to tell us about that? One of the first things that was asked is um, because he left when it was very dark outside um, was if he might have taken a flashlight and um, he actually has one that he plays with regularly and I can't find it. So it's likely that he took it. Okay. Jason asks, thank you for being here, Jason. Uh, does he have anything that he holds on to, anything that he has to have with him at all times, something that keeps him calm when he has it? 
He has various fidgets that he changes out and plays with. Have you noticed any of those are missing as well? Honestly, it'd be impossible to tell. He plays with paper clips and pennies and Legos, things that several could go missing and it wouldn't be noticeable. Okay. Please put some green hearts and prayer hands in the chat for this family because today is seven days and it, this is a critical time that we need to come together and stop attacking the family. If you can't do something productive, like just sit on your hands or something, I don't know. And Trev, I do appreciate all that you've done. Trev has been sharing information every day. He has been doing live streams and you guys definitely need to connect. I will put you guys in touch with each other. Um, because he's local to Tennessee, and I know that he will be able to help in any way that he can. And we will definitely connect this week, and we will, um, you know, if not tonight, then tomorrow, so we can get those billboards up. I will get with Crystal later, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about that and try to get those worked out as soon as possible. Um, is there anything else that you want um, us to share? Is there anything else that you think that we have not covered, Trev? Is there Anything that you want to add to this conversation that you feel that we've missed? Well, I just want to encourage people to to keep going. It's, you know, keep the hope up and keep keep sharing his picture, keep sharing his story, keep sharing his flyer, keep praying that he returns, and keep listening to what we're told by authorities because they're out there looking and they haven't stopped and they won't. We all play our part in different ways. If you're on social media, simply sharing his flyer. If you're here on YouTube, simply interacting with a video that has his information, whatever it is, do it for Sebastian. Because until he's brought home, that's the mission, that's the goal, and that's the fight. And that's what we'll do, standing beside this family and beside those looking and beside Sebastian until he comes home. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the end goal. So if you see this flyer on social media, you guys can share this from my YouTube community wall from Trev's. You can share it from our Facebook pages. I'm sure Arctic Fox also has it on his page. Um, whatever we can do to try to help your family, please reach out to me and let me know. And we have a wonderful group of people in this community um, that will try to do whatever we can. And hopefully I'll hear something from Wings of Hope. And they'll let me know if they're going to be able to try to assist. David Bryant, thank you so much for your super chat. He said, we're going to find him. Keep your head up and hug him tight when he gets back. Prayers for y'all. Everyone keep searching and doing what we can. David, I appreciate that. I'm going to take that $50 and I'm going to put it towards that billboard that I'm going to design. We're going to get that up for Sebastian as soon as we can. I really appreciate you donating. It means so much. Well, guys, I really appreciate you joining us. If you have any updates that you want to share with us, please don't hesitate to reach out. If there's something that you want to share, if you want to me to have another live stream, you know, you may want to have a live stream with Trev. He has a large following on his channel, and some of those people don't necessarily follow my stream. So um, I'm sure they might you know, want to talk to you. And um, so we can continue to share out Sebastian's information and you will be on my prayer list. If you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I'll even share my phone number with you. And if there's anything that you need, you can call me. Thank you. You're very welcome. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. It's just sometimes it's, you got to take it a day at a time, but sometimes you can only take it an hour at a time or five minutes at a time. And it's, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody because you don't know how you're going to feel until you're, till you're going through it and how you process things. is not necessarily going to be how the next person does, but you don't owe anybody an explanation. Just know that our hearts are with you. And you have a lot of people. Look at all of these people. We have 400 people watching this live stream right now. There are so many people that are out here supporting. Don't listen to these naysayers. 
We just want to say thank you to everyone who's working with us to try and bring him home. And everybody for all your support and your prayers and your love. You are more than welcome. You are more than welcome. That's what we're here to do. Is we're here to lift each other up. It takes it takes a village. It takes a village. And that's that's what we have to do. We're just here to help each other out. And um, I really just appreciate you um, being willing to come here and share Sebastian's story with us. And um, we'll be thinking of you and you. Um, continuing to pray and share his information. And I'm going to let you guys go because you've you've been up here for over an hour and I don't want to keep you any longer. I want you guys to go take care of just Remember to take care of yourself. Make sure you're eating and getting enough rest and doing what you need to do to keep yourself going. Because it's it's not it's not easy. It can't be easy. It's not not by any means. Chris, you're a good man. You're 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 being so strong for her. And um that just it um it makes me feel emotional. You know, because um, this has got to be so difficult. And you, um, it's just one day at a time. But I, I'm praying that you're going to get answers as soon as possible. You have a lot of people that are working very hard to find your son. Miranda said outside his home, where's his most comfortable environment? Does he have a place like that? His house. <laughs> the only place he likes to be is just at his house. He likes his house. He, like, he likes both houses and he likes, I mean, I, I, his favorite thing to do is go play on the playground and He's, he likes to. He loves being around the family. He loves. I mean, just being a kid. He's not very outdoorsy. Well, that's understandable. And that's okay. Everybody has their comfort zone. I'm not a people in person myself, y'all. I kind of like to stay to myself in my own house where I'm most comfortable. Um, so I'm just hoping that somebody's going to see him. Don't forget, if you live in the area of Sumner County or the surrounding counties, if you live in the surrounding counties, Robertson, Davidson, Wilson, even down to Rutherford, Williamson County, Cheatham County, Montgomery County, Dixon, listen, if he's walking, please check your property. He could be hiding out. You know, he might be scared. He's probably going to be hungry and cold. What's your temperature? What's your weather there right now in Tennessee? It was better today, but we've had freezing temperatures since he left. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Leslie Leslie says, re says, remember, most people are good. I just hope someone finds it. <laughs> Me too. Jolly Life says the family's trying to stay strong so they can get this baby found. They really don't have to, time to break down. That's right. You guys just keep praying. Listen, I'm going to let you guys go. And I will be in touch with you. Just text me tomorrow. We'll get together and we'll work on this billboard to get up. And I'll let you know the locations that are available for a blip billboard. And I'll try to get that arranged as soon as possible. If you need anything, just reach out to me and let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And I will put Trev in touch with you. Okay. Take care, guys. Okay, we're going to let them go. Trev, thank you so much for joining me for this live stream. I know they just need, they've been through so much. I don't want to keep them any longer. No, absolutely. Um, thanks for, thanks for doing that, for having me up. Um, definitely we'll get in touch with them and I'll uh, coordinate some stuff with both uh, flyers locally and um, talk to them about, and there's a search group that if they get involved, then I will be, um, on my way to that area too and I'll be 
I'll be on the ground. So. Okay. Thank you, Sugar Magnolia. It's so good to see you, darling. I hadn't seen you in a while. She said, I'm in Warren and I'll be looking. I appreciate that. Alma, thank you so much. Watching from Nashville, checked my property all the time, just in case. Ruru says, I'm in Knoxville a long way away, but keeping Sebastian in my prayers. We appreciate that. Otto, haven't seen you before. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Wisdom Speaks. So good to see you. Thank you for being here. This is a really tough case, and I'm just really worried about him because you just never know all the possibilities of what could be happening out there. It's not like when I was growing up. I'm 50 years old. Times are not like that anymore. Heather Lynn, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing well. It's so good to see you. Um, just continue to share this case. We're going to get that billboard up. And I've got some other people that I know in Tennessee too, Trev. So, you know, if you have flyers or things that you need to have hung up, maybe I can get Crystal or Michelle or somebody to meet up with you. Maybe they can pick up some flyers from you if they happen to be up in the area. Or um, I don't know how close that is to them. I'm going to have to talk to them. Um, Michelle will come flying in the chat any minute now. She'll let me know something. Um, thank you, FarQ. I appreciate you being here. And Marie says, I'm in. Oh, so you're near that area too. Guys, please keep your eyes out. And if you see something, say something. And if you're not sure, tell somebody. I'm just so uh, I'm just really concerned. I'm hoping that Wings of Hope, he is still searching on the Elijah Vu case. He had a debriefing that he had to attend. 333 in chat. Um, Angel Sign. So, um, and so we're still praying for that baby, that Amber Alert. So he, since he had to attend that debriefing, he's going to get back with me to let me know if he's able to come from Wisconsin. And of course, they work alongside North Star Search and Rescue. Um, if he's not able to go and assist on this case, maybe he can contact um, another search and rescue that might be able to assist this family. Um, we just do what we can. Every, all of us have something that we can we can do to try to help out. Leslie, thank you so much. Plain, praying from Blount County, Tennessee, or Blunt County. It's, blunt, it's pronounced Blunt, right, Trev? Yeah, Blunt County. Listen, I'm from South Carolina, y'all. I don't know all the Tennessee lingo. No, you're you're out of state. We'll give you a pass. <laughs> okay, give me a pass. Thank you, MG the OG. Thank you for being here. I saw you earlier in chat. She said, "Just sent the Amber Alert to my cousin, who is a truck driver. He's back and forth across the U.S. all week long. That is that is wonderful because now my moderator, Cold Case Crystal, right above you, Nashville is four hours from me." We have, um, her husband has these magnetic missing flyers on his truck. She went and had some missing flyers on a case that we're mutually covering together on Jaden Carpenter. And she had them made into magnets to put on his 18 wheeler so that they can be seen all across the country. So if you guys know people that are truckers and they're willing to put a magnetic flyer on their truck, please let us know. Please let us know. We do what we can. Yes, Leslie Leslie says, I must repeat, check abandoned cars and vehicles. Please don't forget to do that. Debbie Wyatt, thank you so much for being here. Praying that Sebastian is back home soon. Prayers for strength for his family. As a mama myself, my heart breaks for them. Hold on to hope, love, and prayers. Thank you so much for being here. Mary says, my team covered some in Goodlettsville today. Well, we appreciate that. Sugar Magnolia, you know you've still been on my prayer list for your mama, so I'm so glad to hear that. Give mama some love for me. Thank you, Alpaca Mate. I'm so glad you did make it over here. I did tag you in this stream because I know you would want to know what was going on. Yeah, Molly Drake, they did say that there was two autistic uh, people that walked, I think somebody walked 200 miles from Mississippi to Tennessee. And then there was another one, Trev, didn't he say Arizona? Mm -hmm. That's incredible. 
I don't think I could walk 200 miles if I had to. <laughs> I don't think I could walk two miles. You and me both. That is incredible to know that they went that far and they were found safe, guys. That's why it's so important to make sure you're staying alert if you live in these areas. Cold Case Crystal, thank you. Please do send it to your hubby because you just never know. You just never know. Reckless Ella says, I live a couple miles away. They have looked all over my land multiple times. I check my deer stands daily and I even left water out just in case. God bless you, Reckless Ellis. We really appreciate you doing that. That's a wonderful idea to leave water out just in case. Just in case. Karen S. says, I am seven miles from them and I have been with group searching. Thank you for moderating so well. We work hard to keep the negativity out of the group, praying fervently daily. God bless you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing all that you can. We we appreciate you helping um, to get the information out about Sebastian and helping to find him. This has been a horrible week for children going missing. It's Nashville's four hours from you also, Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, if you have trail cams, ring cameras, outbuildings, barns, crawl spaces, make sure you are checking everything. And just because you've checked it once doesn't mean that he might not suddenly show up there. Like we don't really know the circumstances involved or where he may be. And no one has spotted him on camera so far. We did hear the stepdad say that they had hours and hours of camera footage and he wasn't even spotted leaving their house on neighbor's camera footage. So, um, but she did say the neighborhood was very dark. Miranda says, I'm South Carolinian, but Tennessee was regularly my family's weekend getaway. Thank you for being here, Argle Bargle. Hadn't seen you in a while. Lord, our God, please bring Sebastian home. Wrap him in protection until he is in the arms of his mom. In Jesus' name, amen. I second that. Thank you, Argle Bargle. We, we are joining you in that prayer um, because we're two or more gathered together. The Lord is in the midst. Amen. And right now, we need that. God is so good. It, it's a miracle that they were safe. Is this And this baby is going to be found too. I'm going to believe in it. We can, we, What good does it do to look at the glass half empty? We have to have hope. Yeah, absolutely. And just remember. The, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Duchess. Oh, go, go, ahead. go ahead. I think I'm have a lag in my, in my Wi-Fi. You're fine. I was just going to say. Uh, just for for all of us and in the true crime community, sometimes we have to remember this. But you know, for every for every hour we sit and spend speculating, is an hour that Sebastian is possibly out in the cold, and so that you know really puts into perspective of what we're really here for is to bring this kid home and let things fall where they must. You know, if there's the, in in this case, it, you know, it seems cut and dry. In some cases, it's not. But whatever happens after happens after. But we have to bring this kid home. Right. We have to be on the side of the child. We're not here to pick things apart. And what does this look like? What does that look like? It's not about that. It's about finding this child. He is the priority. We don't have time to worry about all of the other stuff because that's law enforcement's job. We are just trying to get the resources out there to make sure that this child has a chance to come home safe. Because guys, let's face it, every day when I get up and check social media, children are going missing. Like every 30 to 40 seconds, a child or a person goes missing. And a lot of those cases don't end well. I'm sad to say it, guys. I mean, we have, I try to post as many that I can that are found safe. But for every two or three that are found safe, 10 more go missing. And a lot of these children end up in dire situations, which is why I think parents often get attacked. Because parents are involved when the child goes missing in something nefarious. But guys, that's not how it always is. You have to understand, listen, innocent till proven guilty, even if the parents may not represent like they're good parents. 
it doesn't mean that they're actively involved. It takes evidence. So we can't be going out here and attacking people and attacking their jobs and tearing them down. Like, if you want to have your opinion, have your opinion, but don't come in here and and hate on pe the parents that are looking for their kids. It's just, it's fruitless. It's not helping bring them home. Let's go over to the chat. Did any of the dogs pick up scent? If not, I wonder why. Katie, I have not, don't have any information and they're probably not going to release that information. And I have seen a couple of people commenting about the parents not going out there searching beside of law enforcement. I just want to let you guys know that most of the time when parents have a missing child, law enforcement asks them not to search. I just want to know if everyone is aware of that. Yeah, Most of the time, parents are not asked to search. Especially in this case, it's best to have the family on standby because when the time comes that Sebastian is located, he is going to need somebody he knows. He's not necessarily going to be perceptive to somebody who's a stranger, a searcher, or a law enforcement officer who he doesn't know. So at that point, they're going to need to be able to say, hey, Where's the mom? Where's the dad? Stepdad, you know, somebody. And they're going to load him up and take him to where he is. So that way he can have someone he knows. One, to reunite him with his family, but also because he's going to need someone he's comfortable with. So if you imagine it, if you've got his family four miles down through a path of trees and they're trying to get them out of there to go to him when he's found, it's going to be a whole mess. So you need them ready, one, to answer any questions that may come up, but two, to be able to take him or take them, sorry, to Sebastian. When the time comes, he's found. Exactly. Thank you for explaining it in a way that is probably better than I could have explained it. And besides, if there is something that has happened to a missing child, the parent, they, the law enforcement doesn't want the parents out there looking for the child. You have to understand what their protocols. Maybe it doesn't make sense to you in your mind, but that's just the way that it is. So that's why Alan <laughs> and whoever else, you know, has these thoughts and feelings about why the family's not out there searching. It's because they don't want them to be. I just wanted to make sure that I clarified that information. Um, Cold Case Crystal, thank you. She is going to get a flyer out to her husband on the truck for Sebastian. And I appreciate that. Music City Mom, too. It's so good to see you. I live a few miles from Sebastian and she's been driving around. We appreciate that so very much. Um, let's see. Karen S. says, leave water, snacks, and warm clothing outside no matter where you live in Tennessee, just in case. Sugar Magnolia says, I'm going to go to the river tomorrow and check my barn. I'm 70 miles southeast, and I'll also check my shed and boathouse. That's a really good idea because you just never know. I would have never guessed somebody could walk 200 miles, but I mean, it sounds like it's completely possible. Light and Sound says they live in the area about 20 minutes away. Last July, a co-worker's autistic teen son went missing. He was found safely, and that gives me hope for Sebastian, and I will continue to check my property. That's wonderful. Thank you, Light and Sound, and I appreciate you being here. That's interesting, discovering the truth. And usually pica is like a, it's actually like a medical disorder, you know, to, to, to eat rocks or dirt and leaves and things like that. Um, I'd, I've not really ever seen a lot of kids that have that, but you know, it is possible. Yeah. Ruby and, said, oh, go ahead, Trey. I was just going to say, when we we're talking about how far the walk, um, kids who are on the spectrum, and I'm not speaking for every single one, every single child's different, and I'm not speaking for Sebastian, but in the case of children on the spectrum, they don't always process the idea of, you know, um, going too far, doing too much, how will this strain my body, they go, go, go till they, till they can't. So we may be like pacing ourselves, like if I'm trying to get home, I need to walk like a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, so I can keep energy, not get hurt. In his mind, he may just walk, 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 walk. So that's why it's important that surrounding counties keep their eyes out too because he's going to go 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 until he just has to hit the ground and take a rest he right. won't stop and pace himself he's going to go 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 so he can make it really far which is why it's imperative that people look 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 and just make sure you look with two people 
because aircraft will identify you as a possible match if you're alone. Oh, that's that's important to know. Abs- that's great. That's great information. I didn't even think about that, Trev, because I did see that there was aircraft that was out there looking for him, too. Yeah, if it picks uh, and you he up, might be scared. Around. He might be holed up somewhere. Yep. And I think that was a really fair question when someone said, you know, are there mines? Are there possible caves? Are there, you know, something where he could fall into um, and get trapped where nobody would even see? You know, and maybe that's why nobody has seen him because he's fallen into something. So, um, you know, I just didn't know what your thoughts were about that. I'm not very familiar with this area, but I'm sure if anyone lives in that area, they could tell me um, if there were, you know, any open uh, pipe areas or if they had any mining areas. Um, Molly Drake says, my husband's family's around Bowling Green and a few other places around there, and you'll have to keep an eye out. Yes, please do. Um, and if somebody could drop Trev's link, in chat, that would be great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because Ruru wants to make sure she gets that. And you guys definitely need to go over there and watch. Trev had a live stream today earlier at lunch. And he has a lot of information on his community wall as well as on his Facebook. So make sure you go over and follow Trevor on Facebook as well. Um Allie, thank you for being here. Says we had a woman to go missing a few days after he went. Let's see. We had a woman to go missing a few days after she went missing and they found her body today. And I'm praying that he is saved. It's been a hard week for Sumner County. I'm so very sorry. Hey, Dragon. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, they're asking people to check cameras from Sunday afternoon to Monday. They're probably just giving them a a large span of time to look at to see if he shows up anywhere on the cameras at any given point in time. And it's just to lay down the alibi. It's just to make sure that everything checks out as it should. You know, because you don't want to cut it off too soon. You know, just, just to be on the safe side. Alma, thank you so much for your super chat. I just saw that. Let me get over here. I'm so behind in chat, y'all. Please forgive me. Let me get over here. Alma, thank you. She said, I sincerely appreciate your efforts in raising awareness about Sebastian. Your kindness is commendable. Thank you. God bless you, Alma. I really appreciate that. And I'm going to put that towards um, Sebastian's billboard. So, um, Alpaca Maid, thank you so very much. I just saw that. I love you so much. You're such a wonderful moderator. And Alpaca Maid has a wonderful channel. If you follow the Summer Wells case, she has a lot of little tidbits there. And on her backup channel, Blue Haired Bingo Babe, you want to make sure you're subbed up to both of those. Um, She has her own little insight into the way she looks at things. So make sure you're subbed up to Alpaca Maid. And Alpaca Maid, I'm going to put that towards Sebastian's billboard. I think we'll be able to keep it up for well more than a week. So I really appreciate y'all so very much. Many caves, Music City Mom. Oh, my. See, I'm not familiar. Do autistic children tend to have pica? I'm not sure, Ginger Snap. Trev, do you know anything about it? I I don't know that they do. Um, Of course, they'll all have their little um, quirks and, and things that they do, but... As far as having that, I've I've never heard of that to be a to be a correlation. But I'm not I'm not an expert, so I don't want to speak for certain on either way. I'm sure it can vary. I mean, because the spectrum is so broad, there's it, there's all types of possibilities. Um, let's see, Alpaca made yes. Go read when your child is missing on missing kids. I actually have that link. Let me go over here and grab it from my Discord mod links. Um. It'll take me just a second to pop over here and see if I can find that link, and I'll drop that in chat. Let me see. Let 
Well, I have a lot of links, it looks like. <laughs> oh my goodness. I do have to hop down, Duchess. I uh, need to get some things done and get some things in line in case I do end up heading out to that area. But I appreciate okay. everyone. I appreciate you having me up. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for joining me, Trev. I really appreciate it. And thank you for keeping Sebastian's name out there. I really appreciate you. Absolutely. And we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Sounds good, Trev. I'll send you their information. Take care. Y'all put some hearts and prayer hands in the chat for Trev being here. I really appreciate him so much. He does such a wonderful job covering the missing. So y'all need to make sure you're subbed up to Trev Times channel too. Can somebody drop his link for me? I really did think I had that in the mod links. <laughs> I'll pack the maiden. Now I can't find it. Probably because I'm on a live stream and it's just not popping up here for me like I want it to. Oh, here we go. When your child is missing, a family survival guide. That's probably the best way to. That's a really good guide to look at, I would say. For sure. Hey, Ghost. How are you doing, Ghost Eagle? It's good to see you, hun. Thanks for being here. Hey, Katie Brewer, good to see you. I hope they find him safe and sound. I'm always checking my phone to see if he was found. It breaks my heart. Me too. Me too. And we appreciate the guys that you come over here, share these cases and share these flyers out. And it doesn't have to be my flyer, guys. If there's somebody else that has a flyer in the same case, share both of them. Share all the flyers. Like, I don't, I'm not the godmother of any missing case on YouTube or anything like that. Like, I want people to use my content. I won't strike you if you're just sharing it um, because you want to talk about this case. Um, to get the information out there, please, I encourage you to use my videos because it's really just about finding the missing person. And that's what this information is out there for. And I just wanted to be sure that all of you had access to what the most accurate information is um, about Sebastian. And again, Sebastian is 15 years old. He has light, sandy, blonde, brown hair. He has brown eyes and he is five feet, five inches tall. He weighs approximately 120 pounds and he is considered missing, endangered, and he has an active Amber Alert issued for him. His full name is Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, and he is from Hendersonville, Tennessee, which is in Sumner County, Tennessee. He went missing on Sunday, February 26th of 2024, um, and he would have went missing sometime after midnight. He was last seen near Beach High School on Stafford Court. He was last seen wearing a black sweatshirt and black sweatpants. Sebastian is a high-functioning autistic, and he likes to hide under things, so TBI is asking residents who live in the search area around Beach High School along Long Hollow Pike, which is around this area here, to please check your outbuildings, garages, cars, under your decks, anywhere where Sebastian may look like that he could hide or go to sleep in case Sebastian used any of those areas. And if you have seen or know about Sebastian's whereabouts, do not hesitate. Please reach out and contact Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838, or you can contact the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at one 800 TBI find. Guys, thanks so much for joining me for this live stream. Sorry I didn't give you guys enough notice, but I only talked to the family, you know, just earlier today. I had some things going on. I had a little car accident um, on Friday evening, and I've been dealing with all of that. So it's been a crazy two days just trying to get through that. So, um, 
I just want to give a thank you to um, my sweet friend, Beth, for reaching out to me and letting me know that she would like for me to cover Sebastian's case. And I want to thank Sebastian's parents for being my special guest tonight to share information about Sebastian's missing case. Um, if you want to support this channel, um, just hit the like button and share this stream out to find Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. And I really appreciate if you guys are on the replay crew. Hey, y'all. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you'll subscribe and I hope you'll be back for future live streams. And again, my name is Duchess and this is where we talk about true crime and missing cases. So take care, guys, and I'll catch you this week on another live stream about a missing person's case. Take care, y'all. Let's help find Sebastian and get him home safe to his family. Bye now.